Welcome back, Amiibros, to Mission 9 of Devil May Cry. In the last episode, we put down Phantom for good and acquired a new gun in the form of a grenade launcher. In this episode, we'll be exploring the other side of Malay Island and acquiring new strength to open up the door blocking our way. What exactly is that new strength? Well, you have to stick around and find out. I'm not going to spoil it for you here. That would defeat the whole purpose of this 13-minute video, and I'm not about to invalidate my work. Sorry. Just gonna have to watch. <laughs> but until then, if we want to get back to the other side of Malay Island, we're gonna need the Wheel of Destiny to open up the bridge again. And unfortunately, we're not gonna be acquiring that for quite a while, so might as well progress forward. Behind this headstone, there is a Devil Star that you can see. Ooh yeah! Also, fun counting game for those of you watching. Count how many Devil Stars we acquire in this episode alone. The number may surprise you. <laughs> That's if you want to keep count anyway. It's not like I can force you to keep count. Besides, there's something more interesting about to happen. Did you guess new enemy? Oh, I bet you did. You're so good at this. New enemy, blades. These demonic bipedal amphibious lizard creatures prefer lunging and slashing at you as their main form of attack. They'll also burrow underground to get the jump on you that way. They don't a shield, which you'll have to break with a well-timed stinger, but that shouldn't take you too much trouble. If you have any DT runes to spare, might as well devil trigger, go into air raid and deal with them quickly that way. Of course, if you don't want to devil trigger right away, dealing with them as regular Dante shouldn't be too challenging. Blades do come in two varieties, small and big, with the bigger ones sporting a darker color scheme. But in terms of differences, that's about it. You know, aside from size. <laughs> but yeah, that's about it. Literally the same method you use to take down the smaller blades, used to take down the bigger ones. Shadows and Death Scissors are still going to be the toughest enemies you've faced up to this point, excluding bosses, of course. Just pay attention to where they're digging from. I know the fixed camera angles can really bite you on this one, but as long as you keep Dante locked on to where they started digging from, you should be able to avoid their pop-out attack, no problem. But we've cleared the room of blades, collected the stray red orbs, let's head over into the next room and see if we can find a way to open up that door. The only way it's going to open up is, is if we light the other side with fire. Don't know why Dante just doesn't take the torches over there, but eh. I guess, you know, the game needs to establish that Dante isn't a practical thinker. He's more of a stylish thinker. I mean, how else would you explain him collecting so many damn devil stars and yellow orbs? Man's got to be styling and profiling. I mean, it makes sense. Figures why, instead of taking the ladder, he just jumps over the ladder. Or he jumps on the ladder and tries to get on the platform that way. I mean, it's efficient. If, you know tiring and arduous, I guess. But, speaking of arduous, let's activate this seal, and by doing so, we activate these platforms. Yay, more platforming and Devil May Cry. Joy. Oy. You know, if my monotone voice didn't express it clearly enough. I'm not a fan of platforming in Devil May Cry games, even even the good ones. It's a, it's a problem that persists throughout most of the series. Only in the later games does it get marginally better, but I'll save that for later. But by overcoming this simple yet arduous platforming obstacle, we acquire a brand new set of Devil Arms. My name is Ifrit. The fool who awakens me shall pay dearly with the fires of hell! Jeez, oh, man. All you had to do was say no. You know, every time I see this cutscene, I always think uh, Ifrit is going to just punch Dante repeatedly until they decide to land on his arms. Was that just me? No? Meh. Well, still, not as cool as the way Alistair was introduced, but a welcome addition all the same. Meet the slow charging pack of punch dealing flame foo fist eating devil arms themselves, Ifrit! Unlike Alistair, Ifrit is a fire based devil arm that utilizes basic punches and kicks instead of regular sword strikes. Imbued with the element of fire, Ifrit is the second highest damage dealer in the game, but it has the shortest range, even shorter than Force Edge. You can charge your punches and kicks as soon as you press and hold the attack button. 
You can let go of the button at any time, but the longer you hold the button, the stronger the attack will be. A full charge with Ifrit takes about 2 seconds, which can leave you wide open for a monster to swipe at you. However, a fully charged Ifrit can break through an enemy guard, and while you're charging, the timing for the style ranking will pause until the hit is executed. And we immediately have to swap out our bitchin' fire gauntlets for our equally bitchin' electric sword, Alistair, because we got a brand new boss fight, Griffin! Unlike Phantom and Nello Angelo, Griffin fights from a distance. His attacks are telegraphed, but they will track you, so put some thought into where you jump and dodge, as to avoid getting hit. Ranged weapons are the best way to deal with Griffin, but you're limited to only Ebony and Ivory, which are your weakest firearms, and the grenade launcher, which will miss occasionally. Now you can see why I decided to go with Alistair, because it gives me better aerial coverage. Now, you can utilize Ifrit and the Grenade Launcher, but the fight will drag on a lot, and I personally don't recommend utilizing that. You're better off just u using Air Raid, and that'll end the fight quicker. I know it makes a whole it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to use a electric sword against an electrically charged demon bird. But this isn't the first leap in logic this series has taken, and I can assure you, it will not be the last. But fun fact about this fight, you can actually just go up straight up to the torches, light it up with Ifrit, and then walk out of the fight that way. Of course, you're gonna, you're gonna miss out on a bunch of red orbs that you may wind up needing for later on, but it's still a fun thing you can do regardless. I didn't do it because, you know... <laughs> I'm a pro demon slayer. <laughs> Put that on my uh, Tinder profile. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I, I don't have a Tinder profile. I don't need one. I'm a pro demon slayer after all. <laughs> anyway, by jumping up here, there's a green orb I do not want to take just yet. And we have a brand new enemy. Yeah, they're just throwing everything at us. Meet the final evolution of the marionettes, as well as the Bloody Marys. The Fetish! You know, Fetish, aside from the name, I have to say, if you were at the Renaissance Fair, you'd be the main attraction. Just change up the name. We can work on that a little bit after this. Anyway, Fetish. These are more powerful versions of the Marionettes, as well as the Bloody Marys. They have access to similar moves, including the stun attack. And, just like the Bloody Marys, they are more likely to block and counter you with their flamethrower attack specific to them. They'll spin their wheels and fling them at you. However, dodging it once does not mean you're safe, as the wheels will stay there for a set time before returning back to the Fetish. So if you think you've dodged successfully the first time, you're wrong. Don't get too cocky with these guys. They do have access to a spin attack move, where they'll extend their arms and spin, or, and spin towards you before falling to the ground afterward. One thing to note with the fetishes is that they are vulnerable to being launched and juggled just like their lesser counterparts, so use that to your advantage. However, if you have Ifrit equipped, then dealing with these guys is no problem as, again, a supercharged Ifrit attack will break through their guard like nothing. And this is the prime time to use Ifrit, if I've ever seen it, because ugh, the way they introduce Ifrit to you in the area before the fight with Griffin... Man, I feel bad for the people that first played this game and thought, Ooh, new weapon! I could totally use this against this boss, and then they proceeded to die countless times before they realized, Wait a minute, Alistair is a far better tool to utilize against this stupid bird. Uh, I feel so bad for the people that played this the first time and came to that realization. But with a brand new devil arm comes some exclusive upgrades. 
which I'll be getting next episode. I'm not going to be spending any red orbs on effort this episode because, well, I want to show base form effort off first before we get into the real meat and potatoes and how this devil arm just absolutely rocks. All in due time, folks. All in due time. As for right now, though, let's show off. Let's show off Ifrit as soon as I collect this yellow orb. All right, time to pound out these fetishes. Phrasing, Jesus Christ, that was awful. But as you can see, my stylish ranking goes up through the wazoo once I hit the enemies with Ifrit. Well, that's because, again, Ifrit is a slow and hard-hitting devil arm as opposed to Alistair, which is a lot quicker and more nimble, I guess you could say. See, how, see, I was able to hold the charge up for that long, and my style ranking went up from, I believe, cool to automatically absolute. That's the kind of power Ifrit has, provided you're able to get a fully charged Ifrit attack off. Look at this. Fetishes don't even stand a chance. Look at that! Automatic stylish? Boom! Like, my god, you want the most amount of red orbs you can get off of an enemy, you utilize Ifrit and just watch as the money just comes pouring in. Look at that. And if I were to use Alistair right now, it'd take forever. It'd be super monotonous trying to take these bastards down. I don't know how I avoided that, uh, that flamethrower attack from the fetish there on the stairs, but I guess, you know, Dante has all the luck. But anyway, let's knock this one fetish out. Boom! Aww. Uh -uh. Yeah, see? It's satisfying to use Ifrit, but just as irritating when you want to get that, like, fully charged Ifrit attack off, and an enemy just denies you. And look at that, we just acquired our third Devil Star. Boom! And yes, when you, uh, when you Devil Trigger with Ifrit, your Devil Trigger changes form, so instead of it being lightning based when Alistair is equipped, when you have Ifrit equipped, it becomes fire based and you still utilize punches and kicks with Ifrit equipped. So yeah, depending on your Devil Arm, your Devil Trigger will adjust. But before we can open up the seal, we have one more fetish to take care of, and unfortunately I finish him off with Alistair. Eh, it's one more fetish, eh, it's fine. Don't you worry, Ifrit. You're going to get plenty of time to shine soon. Come next episode. Oh, don't you worry. Anyway, let's break this red seal. You only have to use 200 red orbs, so you should have more than enough by now. If not, well, I guess you're grinding fetishes. I guess that became your fetish to grind fetishes. Ooh. Anyway, let's cap off mission 9. The clear time of 12 minutes, 25 seconds. And 1,572 red orbs collected, we finish off with another B and a ranking bonus of 350 red orbs. It's a good day to be Dante. But that'll be all for now, folks. Next time on Devil May Cry, we tackle Mission 10. See you guys then.